morning, y'all. Welcome to Coffee with Craig. Uh, wanted to talk to you today. We're going to switch topics like really, really fast here. Uh, wanted to talk to you today. There's currently, in case you haven't been following the news, uh, another active shooter situation uh, taking place in another gun-free zone. Uh, this one is taking place in, at Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, as it's reporting right now, media accounts are basically saying that, the, that uh, nine people have been hospitalized. Uh, they're also saying that at least one of the suspects uh, has been, uh, has been uh, uh, killed. Uh, one of the, they, they're saying that there are possibly two, uh, one with a firearm, one with a knife. Um, so they're still kind of, we're still kind of getting information about what's going on. So we're not sure if there's one or if there's two. Uh, but what we do know is, is once again, active shooter situation in another gun-free zone. Uh, I know this is not a surprise to any any of you that are that are watching this feed right now. You guys know, uh, you know where I stand. You know what I believe a gun free zone is, and that is a target rich environment. It's an environment where basically uh, we're creating victims, and it's sad and it's unfortunate that here it is again, another situation where a law abiding citizen. Uh, who, who could have been legally carrying a firearm, could have been in a position to do something, could have been in a position to be able to make a difference, could have been in a position to be able to save, to save lives. And unfortunately, because of the officials there, because of Ohio State law uh, and the officials there at Ohio State University, well, guess what? They don't have the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, now, mind you, this is last minute. So, I mean, this is like... You know how news reports are. They're, they're less concerned with being accurate and more concerned with being first. So obviously there's going to be more and more information that's going to be coming up. Um, I wanted to get in a, a thing of, you know, what do you guys think it is going to take to get, you know, those who seek to disarm law-abiding citizens on public grounds or just seek to, you know, disarm us, period. What do you guys think it's going to take to get them to see the value of allowing citizens to be able to arm themselves, to be able to defend themselves. How are we going to, I mean, I know some of you out there, some of you out there, you know, not, not all of you are right wing wackos. Some of you out there, I know that there are some liberals who watch us, who believe in the second amendment, who believe in the right to keep and bear arms. You know, what do you guys say? What's going to take to change the minds the, and the mindsets of, uh, of some of those folks? I don't know what it is. Let's see what you guys are telling me. What do you guys think? Uh, it says here, yes, yes, it did say that the, one of the first things that the, the person did, and this was uh, uh, Joseph Sue uh, pointed out, and, I, and I, I apologize for neglecting to mention that. Um, now, the first thing that they did was they plowed into a crowd of people. So uh, we don't know how many of those nine people who've been injured. We don't know how many of them have been attacked with a knife. Uh, we don't know how many of them were injured by the car. Uh, in fact, we don't know if any were actually shot. So let me, let me just throw that out there. Uh, but once again, what we do know is this, and this is, this is the important part. It really doesn't matter whether those individuals or that individual has a gun. What matters is, is that the people on campus, those law-abiding citizens on campus are not allowed to have a gun. Meaning, even if, they, even, even if it is a guy just driving a car onto the campus and hitting people and then getting out and stabbing people with a knife, I, I would tend to believe that still a law-abiding citizen with a concealed carry permit would be the person in the best position to be able to put an end to that particular situation. So, you know, it, it doesn't change the argument. There's, it still makes them a target-rich environment. This was still an individual who believed that they could, by going on a college campus, that they could be able to go after people. Uh, that they could basically be able to, to increase their death toll or their, their victim count uh, simply because the people that are there are not going to be in a position to be able to defend themselves. Um, you know, I, I got to tell you, and I hear Bill, uh, Brian Cross says here that you can't reason with liberals. You know, I, here's what I'll tell you. Yes, there are some liberals, and there's a whole lot of them, quite frankly, that you can't reason with. But there are a lot of people who are liberals because... They're, not that they're non-thinking, they just, they, they, they tend to want to believe that, well, they want to think with their heart more than with their head. And they look at the intent of stuff, uh, the intent of some of these laws, as opposed to, or what they believe 
the, the intent is, as opposed to what it actually does. And I think that especially when, not necessarily when you're talking to policymakers, but when you're talking to some individuals, and when I say, when I'm talking about liberals, I believe most voters are not, most, vote, the, most voters are not like, if this is center, most voters are not out here. Most voters are here. And depending on the issue, can jump from, you know, one side or the other. But I really believe that if they really understood the impact of some of these laws and what they actually do and what they don't do, I think you'd see some folks would change their mind. The problem is getting them to listen, getting some, in particular, getting some of those policy, getting some of those, uh, those policymakers to listen. So let's look here. I'm going to keep refreshing, see some of the other comments that you guys have here. Um, uh, let's see here. Soft target areas. I hate them. Uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel, I'm going to butcher your name, so I'm not even going to say terrorism while well, willing to put money on it. Uh, yeah, quite possibly. We don't know. Um, but I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that we'll find something out. Uh, let's see. Do we have anything else? Anyone else have anything to share? Uh, well, looks like, uh, Looks like that's pretty much kind of the, the gist of the conversation. Basically, we don't know what we don't know. Uh, but what we do know is this. We do know that those seeking to uh, strike fear into the heart of people, those seeking to attack and, and, and kill and victimize people, uh, once again targeted an area where they knew that law-abiding citizens, that the citizens would be disarmed. Um, I, I don't know what it is going to take to get uh, the 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 anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment, anti-self-defense uh, politicians uh, and administrators to see that. Uh, but I think once you see that, once you see that, once we get them to see that all they're doing is creating potential victims, fomenting an environment for stuff like this to happen. Uh, if we can ever get them to see that, I think that we can go a long way in, in maybe not stopping these situations from happening, but reducing uh, the, the number of potential victims. Anyway, that's my rant for this morning. I, I thank you for, you know, tuning in and, and just give me an opportunity to get that off my chest. So you guys take care and we'll see you again tomorrow morning. If you like these updates, please share them with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel.